video, I'm going to breathe new life into my old dance suitcase. I got this about, I want to say, 18 years ago, and um, I used it as my dance bag because I could put my dance shoes in it, my CDs, and then the folders that I needed for teaching, and it was really convenient because I could just open it up and see everything that was inside of it. Um, a couple of years ago, the inside part fell apart. Um, it used to have like a blue plastic on it and I had taken some some cloth napkins and glued them on here for pockets so I could hold my point shoes, my ballet shoes, and my um, jazz shoes up here and then I'd put all my other shoes and stuff down here. Uh, I, was, <laughs> I was really sad when it fell apart because, yeah, I used the crap out of this thing. It also has a taped up hole right here. My foster dog chewed a hole through it, so I'm gonna be figuring out how to fix that. I recently started dancing again, so I'm really excited to give this poor old bag some love. The first thing I had to do was scrape off the old glue and the fibers left from the old lining. I did this with an old bread clip. It's pretty easy work and strangely gratifying to scratch it all off. Here you'll see me putting Mod Podge on the duct tape covering the hole that my foster dog chewed through. I decided to do layers of computer paper in between layers of glue to give that area some more support. Next, I used polyfill to pad my lining. I started by cutting a piece large enough for the bottom and then I covered the bottom with glue. I recommend using less glue than I used here because once it dried there were some hard patches in the fiber and that wouldn't have happened if I would have used less glue. Next I cut strips of polyfill for the sides of the suitcase. I left a space on the bottom corners so that I'd have a nice solid surface to glue the lining to. I repeated these steps for the top part of the suitcase, and I used way too much glue there too. While I was waiting for the Mod Podge to dry, I decided to have a little fun on the outside of the suitcase by painting all the cracks and the chipped area with gold paint. I love its cracks, uh, it's just showing that it's been well loved, and the gold paint mimics the Kintsugi, I don't know if I pronounced that right, which is the art of embracing damage. After all, we're all a little damaged in one way or another, and we might as well celebrate it. And then I painted the Deathly Hollow symbol on the outside. Here, I'm cutting out the lining for my suitcase. If you're making one too, be sure to make it bigger than the actual measurements of the suitcase. I would recommend at least three inches extra. I was careful to cut the fabric so the print pattern would look how I wanted it to on the inside of my case. I decided to use hot glue to attach the lining to the suitcase because it dries fast and I could make sure that the fabric was nice and tight. I kept the glue gun on the hottest setting because I feel like it adheres better when it's extra hot. Now once the bottom was nice and secure, I glued the top edge, folding over the raw edges and keeping it flush with the metal trim. I had to trim the extra fabric off the corners a little bit. I nearly burned off my fingerprints working on this, but the final result was worth it. Next I glued a metallic trim to the bottom corners of the case. I ended up needing two spools and I bought those at Walmart. Next, I used some net lace trim that I also purchased at Walmart to trim the upper edge. I did this to mimic the original lining. Originally, the case had a blue plastic trim that was very similar in length to this black, um, to the black net. And I ended up using two spools of this trim as well. And once it was glued down, I used the silver metallic trim to finish it off. Now that the bottom was finished, I moved on to the top. I wanted it to have two pockets, so I used computer paper to decide how big I wanted them to be, and I used those as templates, making sure to add room for seam allowances. Here, I'm adding the trim to the upper pocket to give it a little bit of sparkle. And now I'm cutting out the long, short pocket that is similar to the original pocket that came with the case. This needed to be longer than the case to work right, and again, I'm keeping room for seam allowances. 
and doubling the height so that I can fold it over and then sew it together. The bottom pocket needed elastic and Velcro, so here I'm starting the top edge of the case. Um, and then I'm cutting a small piece of Velcro and I'm sewing it to the center of the long pocket. Once that was done, I prepped my elastic. I made it just a tiny bit shorter than the length of the suitcase, and then I sewed the bottom edge of the casing for my elastic. Then I used my overlock machine to finish the bottom edge of the pocket. I used a safety pin to string the elastic through, and I used my sewing machine to secure the ends. Once the ends of the elastic were secure, I used my overlock machine to finish the ends. In order for the pocket to look right, the bottom of the pocket needed to be gathered. So here I'm using a basting stitch to sew along the bottom. I then used the top thread to pull and gently gather the fabric. Because the lining will have the extra weight from the pockets, I used iron-on adhesive interfacing to give it the extra support that it will need. Then I took it over to my suitcase and I pinned the bottom edge of the long pocket onto the lining. I did it this way to make sure that the pocket would look right once it was sewn on. With the right sides together, I sewed the bottom edge to the lining. Then I prepped the sides by folding them over and ironing them down. Next I pinned the taller pocket onto the lining and a square of Velcro to the center for the bottom pocket. And then I sewed them down to the lining. Once those two things were sewn down, I folded up the bottom pocket and I sewed the sides. Next, I took a circular piece of bejeweled hardware that was given to me and made a Velcro loop to go on it. I figured I could attach my keys to it and I could also hang my glasses on it. Then I made a decorative black bow out of some spare ribbon in my stash, above where I wanted to attach my circle clip, and I hand sewed the clip onto the liner using crafting floss. and I locked my knot into place using hot glue. I started gluing the liner onto the top lid at the bottom, and once the bottom was glued on, I glued underneath the Velcro because I didn't want the Velcro to be pulling on the liner whenever I used it. I'm hoping that it'll give the extra support it needs so that it will last for years. Then I finished gluing it into place. You probably shouldn't use a rotary cutter to press the lining into the glue, but don't worry because the safety lock is on and it's not cutting the fabric and I didn't cut myself. At this point, I finished it just like the bottom with the silver metallic trim and the black net lace. To complete my suitcase, I added a string of button battery fairy lights that I got from Amazon and I hot glued them into place. Then I tucked the battery pack into the pocket, and my suitcase is done.